them in the top four okay. of Fort Worth, if I remember correctly. Yep, they played was. a mirror match. We had one in the final. Could we see, after really not making much noise, pun intended, are we going to see Steel Song in the final of two challenges in a row? So Victor is the highest seed. Both players on 48 points from day one in Swiss, but there's some tie breakers, and Victor came out victorious on those, so he's the highest seed, slightly, and will be going first. We saw in the last game I cast as well, both players were on that 48-point mark, and they were pretty high up. They were like seventh and tenth seed, so it's going to be that kind of ballpark. So very strong Swiss performances from both players, so no surprise to still see them in the tournament at this stage. Absolutely. We have gotten down to the four best players in the field. I think it's four. There might still be a, uh, one of the top four games going on. Sorry, one of the top eight games to go to the top four. And I do actually think we might have had a little bit. I'm going to check here. We might know the other top four. Now, Pierre, I saw in the Amber Steel Song deck, has a, light, a slightly unorthodox card in the shape of Pedita. It's a six-cost uninkable legendary. As we see Victor ink a legendary card in Bell and play a Fortis. Fear. It's a common card. You're inking a legendary, but that's the beauty of Diesel Orcana. Sometimes you need to ink those legendary cards. Sometimes you absolutely do. And no, unfortunately, the top four, the last one, the last to decide the final top four is still going on. But we are going in our top four game. Looks like we are inking a... It was it a, a harp? golden harp, it was. It was a harp, and Cinderella comes down. Pretty classic turn one as we draw a Cogsworth over on Victor's side of the board. Yeah, and a big thing for Victor here is they have access to that fishbone quill. One thing that Pierre might try to do is we see the baboon remove Cinderella, is they could on turn two go for bare necessities. I'm not sure if it's an option, and potentially discard that fishbone quill. They do have it, so the baboon for Victor is removing the Cinderella, stopping her being able to sing bare necessities. But Pierre could still spend that two ink for it targeting the fishbone quill that's and exactly we are, what happens and you do see the fishbone quill now there is another option there we've got an along game zeus and i believe there's a fortisphere there as well but no going straight for the fishbone quill that had to be the case get rid of that really slow your opponent down get rid of that extra ink and you know when these sapphire decks get too high on ink it opens up way too many options for them yeah and victor no longer has a ramp tool in hand doesn't have mickey mouse no other fishbone quills and we know that Sapphire likes to ramp. Victor with the Mulligan was kind of targeting getting this Fishbone Quill down on turn three. But that's the power of the Bare Necessities. Unlike Ursa the Deceiver, it's not just song cards it targets. It's any non-character card, including locations. And in this case, importantly, it includes items like Fishbone Quill as well. Very nice. We got the Fortisphere down there. And we pass over to Pierre, who's going to ink a Robin Hood. And just pass straight back over. Nothing else to be done. No good free cost card really not what you were looking for there you'd like to start and get some characters on the board but that's what happens when you play too many songs you don't always get the characters but victor inks and passes just straight back yeah four ink on the board for victor without that fishbone quill pierre's really slowed them down rapunzel not how you usually use her nope. of course this rapunzel gifted with healing is an alternative art available as a promo card both on the prize wall as a non-foil but both players have already secured their rapunzel playmat and foil card as victor responds with a cogsworth yeah inking the baboom and then putting down the cogsworth here a lovely five cost quest for two with ward that gives all of your other characters resist one that is a very good card one that sees a huge amount of play so if you're playing these sapphire decks there's a very good chance you're playing old cogsworth or so, big ben if you're in france so pierre's singing let the storm rage on and damaging their own rapunzel because they have a bunch of cards in hand they don't want to ink they can't target cogsworth with ward but this allows them to find the ursula vanessa which was drawn from the let the storm rage on and allow them to play the robin hood otherwise the robin hood was the only ink card available two peditas in hand for pierre which i would imagine are probably the only two in the deck and a whole new world as an option we do see the Tinkerbell coming down, being inked to play another Tinkerbell. That puts a third damage on Rapunzel, and it puts a damage onto that Robin Hood there. This would be a great time to play a Rapunzel gifted with healing. It sure would. Now, Cogsworth could 
be challenging the Rapunzel, but instead it's exerted to sing oh. Grab Your Swords, which is going to put two extra damage counters onto the Robin Hood, as well as removing the Rapunzel. Strength of a Raging Fire, and it looks like it might be a signed copy, is drawn by Pierre. So it's Strength of a Raging Fire, two Peditas, and a whole new world. Pedita can bring back a one or two cost character from the discard pile and play it onto the board. Is there any available? Well, yeah, there's Cinderella. Cinderella from right back in turn one. And you need to remember, it, the Let the Storm Rage on, the damage from that onto the Rapunzel is what opened up Victor yeah. being able to take it out with a Grab Your Swords. We'll see if that has a big effect as we go later on through the game. But Pedita getting Cinderella feels like a very good win. Fishbone Quill gets inked to play a lucky dime. And I am liking this. We could get... No, we're out of we're out of ink for the time being. But next turn, that can start getting a minimum of two law per turn. You might be liking the Lucky Dime, but Pierre is certainly not liking the look of that. A big grimace on their face when the Lucky Dime hits the board. If they don't have cards like Benja or Beast Hardheaded, that Lucky Dime is going to remain on the board for the rest of the game. And that, those are not usually cards Amber Steel Songs has access to. There's another Pedita in hand. There's the whole new world. But Let the Storm Rage On has been drawn, which could, of course, be sung by Cinderella. It could, and you can get some damage down, but it would have to be onto Tinkerbell, and it would not be enough. Of course, we've got resist on that Tinkerbell now as well from the Cogsworth. Cogsworth's got wards that can't be chosen by effects, so there is quite a lot of protection on the board here right now. Victor might only have a couple of characters, but they're quite beefy, and Pierre, Cinderella's all right, Benita's all right, the Robin Hood's pretty good. No one's got any law yet, but it does seem like Victor's set up I'm preferring it right now. Yeah, Pierre's hand is a little bit awkward because whenever Pedita quests, it can also put a character from the discard back into play and the Pedita in hand as well. But there's no other one or two cost characters available for Pierre to bring back with either Pedita. That is not ideal. If you've got a bunch in the discard, you can start flooding your board really nicely, but not an option right now. I mean, you can still use your Cinderella for singing. It's nice that she's on the board, but you really don't want to be getting full value, and that's what's not happening. You're playing Benita, but you're not recovering a character. You played Rapunzel, but you didn't draw any cards. Yeah, exactly. He has not getting full value out of his cards in this game, and it's turning into a problem. That is true, but Victor's also in top deck mode. Finds the Flabbersham, though, off the top, and that's Beautiful. a huge moment because suddenly the draw engine is available for Victor, down to zero cards, but now with the Flabbersham on the board, Ooh. that is going to be very difficult for Pierre to stop Victor drawing cards. Does have a whole new world if you really want to go for it yep. and get a lot of new cards, but I do think we're at the stage where Pierre would quite like a new hand of cards, frankly. Yep. Well, both players have the whole new world now, so we're in a bit of an interesting... Oh spot where whoever goes for the whole new world is maybe putting themselves at a slight disadvantage because you're losing out on law potentially to do that if you're singing it the lucky dime is going to be the first law on the board for victor and in fact the first law on the board in this semi-final at all nearly eight minutes in and we finally got some law ross I mean, it was going to happen eventually. It's nice that we finally get some lore. Now my big question is, who, if either player, is going to be playing Whole New World? Of course, both players know the other plays it. Both players do not know the other has it. And we are inking here. Rise of the Titans. And it seems like a pass. Yeah, the Whole New World still in hand for Victor. And interestingly, Pierre has that bare necessities. So while they might decide to ink it, they could be tempted to make a read that it's maybe like another Lucky Dime or some kind of song. They do ink it, though, and Pierre's going to exert it to play the Golden Harp. Now, if this banishes itself at the end of the turn, it could be pulled back by Pedita. So okay. Golden Harp, if you're not singing a song or not playing a song, the turn that it's on the board, it will banish itself into the discard pile. But Padita being able to bring it back is a bit of a win. Here we see the whole new world, and both players there getting a look at, oh, my, my opponent also had only one yep. card, and it was whole new world.
And Pierre, another grimace when they see that the one card was a whole new world. They were probably hoping for something like a Tamatoa or something along these lines. Finds another Bear Necessities, which is an interesting option and it is going to be sung. After a whole new world, I, I always really like Ross being able to play either Bear Necessities or Ursula Deceiver. Just yes. seeing what's in your opponent's hand, getting all that information oh. is really crucial. It is, but all you hit there was a single Pops Corn that we like Pops Corn. It's a one cost item, draws a card when you play it, can be banished with here and Flavisham to draw cards, but it's really not what you were looking for no. there. You were looking for something a little bit more impactful. Yeah, and the other thing for Pierre is as the whole new worlds go through, if they can manage to discard any one or two cost characters via a whole new world, then suddenly these Peditas, every time they are questing, is going to be able to bring a character from the discard into play. And that could get dangerous very, very quickly. Yeah, it really could. We see some questing here with Pedita. No, we're singing with Pedita. We're singing out along game Zeus to get rid of the Tinkerbell. Now, just to make clear, on the board for Victor, there is a Flavisham and a Cogsworth. The rest of the cards on the board are actually Victor's hand, which was seen by Bear Necessities. They could pick it up if they want to, but Victor's just, he's not really, fe not really feeling like it right now. That would be a great board. Like, if that was an actual <laughs> board, that would be amazing. Unlikely, but would be amazing. It would be pretty good. In comes uh, Mr. Smee, only going to cost two, but it can quest for two. And speaking of questing for two, it's the Piglet, Pooh Pirate captain and this is the power Ross of that bare necessities because Pierre could have discarded grab your sword there if it was in Victor's hand but Victor could draw it it's rise of the Titans but Flavisham two more cards for Victor to find the grab your swords can they do it I think they did it Ross I think it's baboom and is it a grab your swords I think it might be a whole new world no it's a fortis fear doesn't look like it's happened I'm oh. sure someone caught that I'm not grab your I, did, I didn't see it in his hand personally. I'm not saying it's not yep. there. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. I saw Fortis Fiat. I saw a baboom. I mean, I definitely want to baboom the piglet, if nothing else. Even the Fortis Fiat is going to provide another card draw opportunity. So you could go for the Fortis Fiat, then maybe draw another card, and that could be the card that Victor is looking for. Let's see what they go for. It is going to be the Fortis Fiat. Probably looking for that grab your sword. It's a Tinkerbell which is certainly not the worst idea at a moment like this where there's lots of characters on your opponent's side of the board. But is Tinkerbell going to be enough? Because Pierre is questing for an incredible amount, Ross, with the Robin Hood, the Golden Heart, the Piglet, the Smee, the Double Pedita. They all quest for two. And there's a Cinderella just tucked at the top of the screen, which I do believe is still on the board. 12 is the total oh. we're going to be questing for next turn. If, assuming all those characters remain on the board, I believe Pierre is questing for 12 wow. next turn. Just, just 12 in a single turn. Not bad, eh? I mean, to be fair, Ella in the, in the interview earlier told me they got 13, 33 law in wow. one turn with Tamatoa so far. So I'm going to be honest with There's you. There's the Tinkerbell. It removes the Robin Hood with the help of Cogsworth. One damage onto everything, but everything else on Pierre's board remains. Robin, Robin Hood, Hood banished, but no card drawn, Ross. It's only when Robin Hood is banished in a challenge that Pierre would draw a card. Yes, correct. So lots of damage on the board, but there's still so much questing power. We do see the ba-boom coming down and getting rid of the piglet. So that's at least one. But we've still got two from the... Remind me what's on the left-hand side there. Oh, the Golden Harp. Yeah. We've still got two for the Golden Harp, two from the Smee, two from each of the Pedita, and one from the Cinderella. That's still nine lore. That is not too shabby. NTS. Pierre as well now has got that Cinderella back in the camera shot. The board was so wide that it was easy to almost forget about Cinderella being there for a moment. Of course, if they have Cinderella stout-hearted, that could be a really interesting shift option as well. Now, this Piglet Pooh Pirate Captain got banished by Victor, but guess what, Ross? When Pedita quests, that Piglet Pooh Pirate Captain can be coming back down onto the board. Interestingly, the Smee could challenge Cogsworth as well, banishing the Smee, and then it could be pulled back by another Pedita. So Pierre's got some really interesting options here. They're going to sing Let the Storm Rage On with Cinderella. 
damage their own Pedita. I think I see where this is going. I think I see where this is going as well. I think we might be seeing a Rapunzel gifted with healing. There it is. Now that is full value. You are then getting three extra cards from the Rapunzel here. That is exactly what we're looking at. There's another signed card in the deck there as Holy well. Holy world, amazing. Very nice indeed. Lorcana does allow you to play with signed cards, and that makes me very happy. Agreed. I was playing with some as well in uh, in the show match. I mentioned great. it. I'm glad. I'm glad. How many uninkables are you playing again? <laughs> so Smee, definitely considering that option to challenge the Cogsworth, banishing the Smee, bringing it back with Pedita. I do believe the only one-cost character in the discard is the Piglet, and the Smee is now joining Piglet into the discard pile, but I don't think that's going to be for very long at all. No, your quest with both the Pedita bring both of those characters right back, and Pierre is navigating this wonderfully. Early in the game, Pierre was not getting the proper value from their cards, but now they are, and crucially, their opponents only got free lore, and that's the key. Yep. It doesn't matter if you you have a slow start if you're not using all your resources as efficiently as you want to as long as your opponent doesn't have a ridiculous start and right now that has not happened Pierre still with three ink remaining he's going to spend all three of that ink on an aerial spectacular singer they're going to look at the top four cards of their deck and if any of them are songs, they could go into the hand, it's but none of them are. And look at Victor. Victor loves it. Victor's very happy about that. We've seen a lot of whiffs off Ariel on stream today. People are not having the best of luck. But look at Pierre's board. Cinderella, Pedita, Pedita, your Golden Harp, your Ariel, your Rapunzel. Looks like we've just inked a Lawrence as well. So we could be seeing another character. Here we see questing with... Well, both the Pedita and the Golden Harp, that is six extra lore. And we're also going to be bringing back two characters, which is going to be Mr. Smee oh, and Piglet. It's Mr. Smee, the bumbling mate, and the captain supporting them in Piglet as well. It's just glorious to see. Yeah, and of course, Mr. Smee takes the damage if exerted at the end of your turn, but that is not the case if you've got a captain down, and Piglet is very much a captain. So it looks like we're back over to Victor here. We are questing, I believe, with Hiram Flavisham, getting rid of that Fortisphere, drawing a couple of cards. Is Tink it what they need, though? Tinkerbell still ready and waiting, of course, can challenge a character and then deal two damage elsewhere. So that's going to be a really nice control option for Victor to just slow down the questing potential of Pierre. The problem is they got rid of that piglet the last turn, but with a simple quest from Pedita, it came right back. We're really seeing the power of Pedita from Pierre here. And that's the thing. When you've got Pedita down, your opponent can't just take out your piglet and be like, yay, job done, yep. you've got to take out the Piglet and the Pedita, Absolutely. or else the Piglet's just going to come straight back. And it makes it really frustrating. And at this point, I think Pierre is in a really commanding position, because his deck is now set up, those two Pedita are recovering characters, and Victor, you know, if this was a Ruby deck, a Ruby Sapphire deck, well then, you know, play a be prepared, get rid of all of those characters, and then you can feel really good about making that comeback. But Sapphire Steel does not have those those kind of cards like be prepared clearing this board is going to be a herculean task and if you don't clear the board quickly you are not going to win the game and pierre is threatening around 14 or 15 law here in a single turn 15 15 law in a single turn Only so needs victor, 12. victor really needs to remove as many characters from pierre's side of the board as possible yeah, we've got 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Might just be... Oh, plus the two extra from the pig from the piglets. Yeah, it is 15 here. So you need to take away, I mean, absolute minimum four law worth of questing yep. from Pierre. And that's just to only put Pierre on 19 law next turn. Yep, and that is definitely doable for Victor with that Tinkerbell being able to challenge into the Golden Hop and then the two damage onto the Piglet, which is exactly what happens. But that means there's two more characters for Pierre in the discard, which Pedita can bring back. But well, one, one Pedita goes down from the, and along came Zeus. Yeah. 
It wasn't sung, but doesn't matter. It's still getting rid of Pedita, but for Pierre, it's another big turn of questing. And Victor is still 16 law away, although that lucky dime is still on the board for Victor. It is still on the board, but Pierre can go from eight all the way up to 16 this turn just by questing of everything, if they so wish, and then could even, oh, but instead, we do want to use Cinderella for singing, dealing one damage to Cinderella. Remember, Cogsworth is lowering that down. Play a bit more, excuse me, pay a bit more ink here. Looks like we might be playing a character of some description. Looks like Ariel's being hovered here by Pierre. They're really leaning towards that. Having some second thoughts, though, potentially, of course, Ariel as a singer five is a really nice option to have down on the board to sing those powerful Steel songs. It's a big reason we see Amber and Steel pairing so well together because of this Ariel card. Yep, Steel have the good songs. Well, so do Amber, to be fair. But Amber have the good singer. Steel have the good songs. Whack them together, and you have this Steel song deck of which so many people are fond. Now, we're not doing... We've quested up to 14 with Pierre here, so we need to try and preserve six lore worth of questing. So we're just going to try and get more characters. Of course, Pedita's going to recover one. Is it going to be Harp, or is it going to be Piglet? Going for the Harp here. Piglet would get one more lore. Yeah. Piglet, one more lore, but that two extra willpower on Golden Harp means that it's not going to be removed by a Grab Your Swords. And in comes the Smee and the Robin Hood. This is what Amber Steel songs can do so well, utilizing the whole new world card draw and then just developing a really wide board with big questing power. Yeah, and if you're Victor, you need to try and end the game quickly. We're eyeing up a Tamatoa with a Lucky Dime already on the board, but that's, that's the only item on the board. So you, you wouldn't get enough. Now, if Victor had six items on the board, then we can talk. But unfortunately, I think six is a minimum you would need to win the game this term. And I'm not sure. And Victor is looking. And it does look like Victor is conceding wow, the there first we go. game. Pierre is too far ahead with too good of a board. And we are heading to game two. And there was a big reaction from the crowd here watching the games along with us live here in Bologna. Big shout out to all of those people as well as the people watching from home enjoying the very best of Disney Lorcan action. We showed Pierre's top eight game and our fishbone quills in their opening hand. Maybe a fishbone quill and a Mickey. Mouse. We saw the fishbone quill getting discarded and then Victor having no more ramp to fall back on. Which is not what you wanted. You ended up without getting that ramp, which means that this Sapphire Steel deck does not work as intended. Of course, this was my pick for the weekend, Sapphire Steel. It's a favorite deck of a lot of players in the room, so Baker was telling me. But right now, it is in trouble of going out in this top four match. Yeah, Victor did have a Mickey Mouse in their opening hand, possibly even two Mickey Mouse or Mickey Mice. And uh, looks like there is still a Fishbone Quill and a Mickey. So this time if Pierre is to go for that same Bear Necessities play, Victor will at least have that Mickey Mouse to fall back on. Which is always a bonus. Mickey Mouse, your free cost on Inkable that ramps up when you play it. Get an extra ink into the Inkwell there, which is a bit of a win. Yep, Victor going to shuffle the deck, of course, after the mulligan. Pierre is ready and waiting, presenting their deck to Victor to give a little cut, maybe a little shuffle to make sure that everything's all OK with both players. There's our lovely table with some very big dice. I need some big dice as well. Big die, I suppose, is the correct phrase. No, no, one big die, two big dice. Oh. One die, two dice. I was so close. You were right the first time. I was. And also you can see the first chapter Mickey Mouse deck box there. I think that belongs to Pierre. A pretty nice deck box to have indeed. Yeah. I've got the Captain Hook one with me. I've got the Mickey Mouse one with me. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. I love it. Gifted by Ravensburger, I should say, which was very kind of them to do so. So here we go into game two, and it looks like Victor is going first. We play the Fishbone Quill into the Inkwell, and then the Fortisphere comes down onto the board, drawing a card, and we pass over to Pierre, who's... Oh, there's three Tinkerbell and an Ariel in hand here. Yeah, they all cost six. With the Fishbone Quill, you can get those six cost characters down on turn four. With Mickey Mouse, it's not going to be in turn, until turn five that you can get those six cost characters down. So Victor's going to be hoping to draw into some characters they can play soon. Robin Hood for Pierre. Victor does have a Baboom. 
which can remove the one cost characters. Pierre's going to be looking to try and maybe sing a whole new world nice and early. But that is denied by this baboom coming through as Bell goes into the inkwell. Yeah, absolutely does. Fishbone Quill got inked, but hopefully next turn we can still have a Mickey. We've got at least two Strength of a Raging Fire in Pierre's hand. We've got a Lawrence, we've got a Rapunzel gifted with healing. So we've got a few options here. A lot of inkable cards. Question is, where do we want to go? Do we have a good two cost? It's the Mr. Smee, the Mushu. Moosh, I believe it is. Ah, uh, well, he's been inked, so was there a second Mr. Smee? I'm not sure. I think yeah, there is I think right there at the front is, of the actually, hand. Yeah. There's also an Ursula Vanessa as an option. So Ursula Vanessa, not going to be questing for as much as Mr. Smee, but is able to sing four cost songs and three cost songs as well. So able to sing Strength, Storm Rage On, as well as And Then Along Came Zeus. Which is not too shabby at all. Back over to Victor, and we see inking one of those Tinkerbell. There were multiple in hand. And here is the predicted Mickey. Just a reminder that that Mickey Mouse inks the top card of your deck. It is done blind. You don't even get to see which card you put in your ink well, which does actually mean you then start losing that tiny bit of knowledge yep. of what is available for you for the rest of the game. Very true indeed. It's going to be back on over to Pierre. Mickey Mouse on the side of the board for Victor with the Fortisphere. Pierre with that Ursula Vanessa. Baboom in the discard for Victor and that Robin Hood in the discard for Pierre. Yeah, we see another Mr. Smee going into the Inkwell. That's two now. And Lawrence comes out, a card that a few weeks ago was seeing very little play, but is now coming out a lot in these Steel Song decks. When it's undamaged, it's a free cost Inkable 4 for the quest for two. And that is a very nice stat line indeed. Yeah, so if Pierre went for the Smee on turn two, they'd have one law more at this stage. But look at the hand for Victor. Those Tinkerbells are st and the Ariel are still not able to come down. Remember, if this was Fishbone Quill on turn three, Victor could have gotten to six this turn, but instead is going to ink a tink and then pass play on to Pierre. And it must be quite frustrating because game one, you rely on the fishbone quill. It gets hit with a bare necessities. Game two, you're like, I'm not falling for that again. I'm going to put it in the ink well and no bare necessities comes down. You could have had it. And speaking of frustrating, the aerial has missed again. Ross, do you remember what Victor inked on turn one this game? Mr. Smee. It was Fishbone Quill, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, sorry. So Pierre inked Mr. Smee. Yes. Yes, Victor inked Fishbone Quill. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Inked it, and then no bare necessities came down. Absolutely. So you've had the worst of both worlds. The turn you keep it, it goes away. The turn you gave it away, you could have kept it. Yeah, so even though bare necessities wasn't available for Pierre, Victor was so worried about it, and I do believe that the only the discard target in hand was going to be that fishbone. Victor ends up inking it to make sure that that bare necessities is getting no value but then ends up having to skip a whole turn where the fishbone quill would have allowed them to have a whole Tinkerbell on the board by now, which would be such a different board state. It's all about decisions. Made that decision going. I tried to use it game one. It didn't work out. I'm not falling for that again. And unfortunately, it would have worked this game. But it's one of those things you'll never to know. You know your bonus playing it. You know that you, they can search it with Ariel and sing it early. It's, it's annoying but it's one of those things as Tinkerbell comes down and puts one damage on each opposing character. Yeah, and that's particularly important in the case of Lawrence because of the card text reading if this character has any damage. If it has no damage, it gets plus four strength. So that plus four strength has been removed and it is now just a zero four character which quest for two in comes and then along came Zeus Tinkerbell removed and the crowd loved that one Ross and Pierre is doing exactly what they managed to do oh. in game one what have you seen the Zeus was sung by Ursula Vanessa with that singer four Pierre had that option I believe did they did they sing or did they just play it because now plays passed on over to Victor and I don't think Pierre played anything there I think it's the same result in the end, except one more law because you quested with Vanessa and Pierre is eyeing this up. I am hearing that in the other match that Ely is one up against Ruben. Okay. 
Very, very fascinating. So Pierre is still only at three ink. Didn't ink the last turn. The hand, there's an Ursula Vanessa, there's a Rapunzel. So they could have inked Rapunzel, Pierre, in the previous turn, but decided not to. And this has now allowed them to Rapunzel this turn to add an extra card into their hand. But Victor is really in the ascendancy in terms of ink available. Pierre at just four. Victor's at eight, I believe. Not too bad. Seven ink for Victor right now. Just confirming that was the other top four games. So both top four games, we've had one concluded. That means we should be in the final before too long. Although I have to sit down for the final, so it's a little bit sad. But then I get to watch you and Baker tell me all about the final. But first, we have to decide which of these players is going to be in the final. Right now, it really looks like Pierre has got the inside track here. Up one game to zero and really doing a good job with the ball. Board, but that Ariel is questing for five right now by virtue of having more items in play. Yep. So I would love, love, love to see a lucky dime coming down here so that you could do it twice. Yeah, and the Rapunzel healed the Lawrence, a whole new world sung by Ariel. And the Lawrence now is back down with no damage counter, so it's back up to that four strength, four willpower stat line. Not too bad. Rapunzel healing is good for drawing cards, but it is also good for actually healing sometimes, yeah. and that can give a big advantage. Two Mickey for potentially ramping Don. Tamatoa has come out here. No lucky dime yet, but there is a here and for Lavasham for draw if you want it, and a beast as well, and a baboom. Yeah, Victor with no access to anything like Grab Your Swords either, which can be a really nice card in a spot like this to try and clear multiple threats at once. Pierre is at nine law, Victor still on zero. So Pierre, 11 law away, currently can quest for six if Victor doesn't remove any of their characters. So here we see a lot of ink being used, and we are playing Hiram Flavisham, getting rid of that Fortithea, going and getting a couple of extra cards here. And the draws were another Popsicle and a Mr. Smee. I don't mind just playing a bunch more items at this point, getting ready. We know there's a Tamatoa in hand. We know that Hiram Flavisham is working as a draw engine. So I'm honestly not opposed here to just playing as many items as you can, as fast as you can. Yeah, the Popsicle going to also be drawing a card. That Flavisham is going to be able to quest next time. And Victor might also want to just try and develop some more singers, but only three ink available right now. It does look like it's going to be the Popsicle, so one more card draw available. There's the Tamatoa. I think you already have one in hand, didn't you? I think you might be right. I think it's the second Tamatoa yeah, in hand. two Tamatoa in hand confirmed now. The boom I is looking like the option for Victor for two ink. Probably going to be targeting that aerial to deny that one law, but Victor might also decide to sink two damage in elsewhere, maybe into Lawrence, and then if they draw that, grab your swords, both aerial and Lawrence would be cleared. Yeah, they absolutely would. Of course, we have already seen two Rapunzel gifted with healing going down. Sometimes damaging your opponent's characters when you're worried about a Rapunzel can backfire as they get maximum value and draw a bunch of cards. But with your opponent having already benched two of them, you know they can play more, but you know it's much less likely at this point. It is still Victor's turn. They still have two ink available, I believe. They did exert that two ink for the baboon, but it hasn't yet actually been played. But there it goes through, and it is going to be Ariel decided. I think they were considering their options there to go for the Lawrence, as mentioned, and then hope to draw a grab your swords. But this does deny the Ariel Singer 5 ability for the next turn, or just Pierre simply questing for one, because at this moment in time, every law matters. But look at that, Ross. Pedita was the star of the show in game one, and Pedita is back for Pierre. But somehow Pierre's only at four ink, so Pedita's still at least a turn away. Yeah, we're not there yet. We need to pop an ink down, and then we need to get another ink next turn, and then Pedita can come in. Great card, but it is a six cost on ink. But now we have the bare necessities of life. They will come to you. But what will come to Pierre here as we have a look at the hand? And it seems like Fishbone Quill is the only option. After that, we've got Mr. Smee, a couple of Mickey, couple of Tamatoa. 
Yep, so again, that is the hand for Victor. The only cards on the board for Victor are the Flavisham and the Ariel. Victor just presenting all the cards in their hand for Pierre to see. And it's really interesting that Pierre only has four ink, but spent half of that on a simple bare necessities. But if Victor had something like a grab your sword in hand, Pierre would have absolutely wanted to remove that as quickly as possible. It looks like Robin the Hood, Robin Hood, or Robin Dubois is going to go into the ink. I'm not sure if the pronunciation of the French there was spot on, but we'll take it. <laughs> okay, Ariel's missed a few times already today. Surely not again, Pierre. It's a whole new world, which he's not too happy about. Plus, whole new world. If you know your opponent's holding a whole new world, that does give you a lot more information. It means that if there's a card you really want, you know to play it down nice and early. One important thing for Victor, has two Tamatoa in hand. Yeah. So a whole new world, getting rid of both of those Tamatoa could hurt in the end game. Victor's on no law whatsoever right now. You need some big swings at the end there. You've got Ariel down on the board, admittedly. But I want to get a Tamatoa down at some point, and I'm worried if whole new world gets rid of too many of them. I think Pierre's going to be wanting to remove this aerial with that five questing power. So aerial removed. Lawrence now with those damage counters is now going to be a zero four. Zero strength, that is, and four willpower, of course, just going to take two damage from Victor to remove. Victor almost forgot to pick up the hand there, but <laughs> I have now remembered. Always a bonus when you remember to pick up your hand, the cards you're playing. Was that a fishbone quill top deck? It was fishbone off the top. There's two popsicles on the board, so a couple of tasty snacks for Flavisham. Victor has got a law on the board. 19 more to go, Victor. Yeah, Pierre, unfortunately, only needs eight more, so it's going to be a little bit of a rush at this point to try and make sure we can get there. We know we can get big swings with these Sapphire decks, but we need to actually start working towards them now. We need to get Lucky Diamond, Tamatoa, or another Ariel, or Bell we've seen in this deck already. Something along those lines where you can just quest for five or more at least twice. You need to be trying to build a 10 law return because Pierre has got a bunch of characters down, and right now, questing for five next turn? Yeah, That'd there's a lot of lore potential there. Yeah, Rapunzel and Lawrence both questing for two. The Vanessa and Errol for one. So six, six law quest five. potential. And six will get you from 12 to 18. But there's no, there's nothing like the Super Goof or Goat or anything in Pierre's deck that will get that two out of nowhere, is there? Not that I'm aware of. We did see one of the players in Fort Worth playing with the... Blue cards, but I'm pretty sure Pierre's not on the super. Uh, on to on on the oh, blue. Blue's the word I was looking for. Yeah, blue's good. Blue gets you. It's a bodyguard that when banished gets you two law. The problem is you've got to play it down and then got to wait for it to be banished. Great yeah. in the early to mid game, but in the late game when you want that last two law right now, your opponent can potentially ignore blue. And that you can did see be a, a really cool pain. play in Fort Worth Ross, where the player quested with their blue and then spent four ink to Zeus their own. And blue to win the game. That, that is quite spectacular. I love that. I saw that play. It's always fun when you can pull that off because, of course, the vast majority of cards just let you target any character, as long as it's out of ward, of course, and that will include your own as well. So it's not always the way you want to go. What well, the way you do want to go, though, that is Tamatoa. And again, you know your opponent's holding a whole new world. You don't want to lose all of your Tamatoa too quickly. Oh, okay. Now, Victor almost forgot to pick up the Porpsicle from the Tamatoa, but then inks the beast, plays the Porpsicle, draws a card. That is the power of Tamatoa. Not only is it a big body on the board, but it's also recycling your Porpsicles, and Porpsicles draw you cards. So Tamatoa, if you spend nine on it, it's often going to draw you one card as well. One for the Porpsicle, eight for Tamatoa. Yeah, absolutely. Get the eight to play the Tamatoa, the one to play the Porpsicle after you recover it with Tamatoa, but get an extra card, and now Tamatoa is questing for free. Three, minimum. Now, Pierre is going to ink a Robin Hood, which is going to finally put them up to six ink. I can't believe they're in such a strong position, despite taking a whole turn off from inking way back when they were at three ink. They could have inked that Rapunzel, but they decided to just 
ink nothing, stay at three, and then find a worse inkable card to put into the inkwell and use Rapunzel for some card draw. And it's working right now. It is working for Pierre. Up 12 law to one. Nice board of characters. Going to get a bunch more law this turn. And at this stage, Victor needs that gigantic sapphire swing at the end of the game. That seems to be about the only thing that's going to save him now. But he does have Tamatoa down. If we could see, it's a lot to ask. But... Lucky Dime and a couple other items could get you quite close. As it is, Piglet, Pooh Pirate Captain comes down. And this is what I was talking about. You are oh now... Oh, my goodness. The strength of a raging fire dealing six damage to Hiram Flavisham. What a play. Deals one damage for each of your characters in play. And with a really wide board, that means six. And... Is Victor even going to be able to get rid of Pooh Pirate Captain right now? Right now, Pierre has got so much lore on the board. Big We've card off the top. Is it the grab your swords? I think it is. I've thought this before, though, and I've been wrong. Victor yeah. needs the grab your swords right now to clear this piglet from the board. But even then, the Lawrence would get removed, but the Rapunzel, the Ursula Vanessa's, and the Ariel will remain. It looks like it was a Fortisphere, not a grab your swords. Oh, and right now, if we look at the board, we've got three, four, five, like at least ten law there from Pierre. We only need three. We need a board wipe from Victor. We need, like you say, a grab your swords. If we were playing Ruby, we would go be prepared. But we're not prepared for that. We're not playing Ruby. And it really is starting to look like Victor might be out of luck in the top four of the Disney Lorcana Challenge. Already one game down, staring down a 17 to 1 Lord deficit with an opponent who has got a very impressive board. And I've seen this face before, Joe. Yeah. This is the, I'm pretty sure I've lost. Let me think through everything yeah. before I concede. And I want to go back to the very first play from Victor after the Mulligan, which was to put the first card into the inkwell. It was the fishbone quill into the inkwell, and it just ended up meaning they skipped turn four. Pierre's been able to get this big board presence down on the board, and Victor just hasn't quite been able to ever claw back that board control. We just drew two from here on Flavisham. And the grab it. your swords is now there, Ross. Definitely there. You're 100% sure. I am very sure this time. For once. So grab your swords. We'll get rid of a lot of cards. We'll get rid of enough cards. It'll get rid of the piglet. It'll get rid of the Lawrence. It'll get... Will it get rid of the aerial? The aerial will remain on the board with just that one damage necessary more to remove it. And the Rapunzel will stay and the Lawrence will stay. So that's five law potential on the board, sorry, four law potential on the board, which you only need three. It's very possible the grab your swords is not enough. Those four willpower on the Ursula Vanessa's, the five on the Rapunzel, the three on the Ariel means grab your swords on its own is not going to be enough. You're going to need something like a grab your swords. Well, maybe two grab your swords. That would probably be enough. Double grab your swords. Now, that would do it, Joe. That would absolutely be enough here. Deal two to everything and then deal another two to everything. Completely wipe the board and go from there. That would be an option. But, uh, well, I mean, it would be an option if Victor had the cards. Does Victor have the cards? Victor just making sure they're taking all the time that they need to make sure that there's nothing else they can do. Of course, once you play a card, you can't take it back. So it's absolutely worth using all the time. Victor's going to play one ink to play a Fortisphere and draws into a whole new world. Okay, the whole new world is interesting. If you're able to sing it, you can draw a bunch more cards. But here's the problem. You need to be working towards the end game. Yeah. When your opponent's on 17 law and you're on one, just buying a couple of turns isn't going to be enough. Now, here comes Grab Your Swords, and that's going to do a bunch of damage. Going to get rid of Lawrence. Going to get rid of Pooh Piglet Captain. A Piglet Pooh Pirate Captain. There we go. But there's still enough law on Pierre's side of the board. And even if you get like another, you never grab your swords, right? And you get rid of all of these characters, you're still not that close. There and there is. we go. Pierre is going to be in the final of the Disney Lorcana Challenge in Bologna. That 2 0 victory with Amber Steel. Steel Song, as we tend to call it. Too many characters, too many options. Amber Steel Songs made the final.